Maddie Weekly is our New Song Academy director, newly uh, hired. You've been here about a month or a couple month and a half, two and a half weeks. Yeah, uh, already a big part of the family. And uh, Patty has been a part of teaching in Las Vegas for years, uh, many years. And as a teacher, uh, also as the principal of the Montessori schools that have been in at uh, in Henderson, and we're very blessed now that she's going to be part of our New Song Academy. She has a wealth of experience, and she has a, she's just such a loving, um, loving spirit, and we're so blessed that you're part of our New Song family. So we're going to install her one more time, so uh, just to make sure it sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Let us pray. Our Lord, who came among us as a servant, calls us forth to faith and to a life of loving service to our neighbor. You stand among us, Patty, as one called to render a particular service as New Song Christian Academy Director, which is a gift from God to inspire us to love and good works. A reading from St. Matthew. Then children were brought to Jesus that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples rebuked the people, but Jesus said, Let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Patty. Will you assume this ministry in confidence that it comes from God? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you trust in God's care, seek to grow in love for those you serve, strive for excellence in your skills, and adorn the gospel of God, which is with a godly life? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. May Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform, to perform them. Let us pray. And I invite you to wave your, uh, put your hand and face, face it towards Patty. Let us pray. O God of wisdom, in your goodness you provide faithful teachers for your church. By your Holy Spirit, give all teachers and church directors, especially Patty, the insight into your word and live holy lives as examples to us all and the courage to know and do the truth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us welcome Patty. There's a single scripture reading this morning. That from Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 through 9. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negeb, and the plain, that is, the valley of Jericho the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, This is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor, but no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Word of God, word of life. Good morning, New Song. How's everybody today? Great. Uh, today is the first day of Advent, and uh, we're going to bless the candle. It's already lit, so I invite us to just uh, open our hearts in prayer. Blessed are you, God of Jacob, for you promised to transform weapons of war into implements of planting and harvest, and to teach us your way of peace. You promised that our night of sin is far gone, and that your day of salvation is dawning. As we light the first candle on this wreath, wake us from our sleep, wrap us in your light, empower us to live honorably, and guide us along your path of peace. Amen. Amen. So Advent begins, and we're going to be looking over the next four weeks in our sermon series, uh, the views from the Holy Land on the journey to Bethlehem. Views from the Holy Land on the journey to Bethlehem. Do we uh, have any pilgrimage? There were 24 of us that went to the Holy Land. Do we have anybody that went to the Holy Land? Uh, Jane, are you our lone 
representative here at 1030? Uh, oh, you've been to the Holy Land, yeah, with our group. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Well, I'm sure you, you're, you're pilgrims too. Very good. And David, how many times have you been? Twice. Uh, so uh, it's kind of going to be a geographical journey to get to Bethlehem. Uh, and we're going to start from far away and little each by, week by week we're going to get closer and closer to uh, Bethlehem. So we begin our journey uh, with the view from Mount Nebo. And Nebo is probably not a word that you've heard until this morning. How many people have heard of the word, uh, the Mount Nebo before today? A few of us, but it's not kind of the, the top 10 list of places we think of in the Bible, but it's kind of, I want you to remember Mount Nebo after uh, you leave today from church. Mount Nebo is in, um, well, first of all, we have to describe how we got to the Holy Land and the Promised Land. So these are our pilgrims in Las Vegas. And if you're fairly good at ge geography, uh, which direction is Tel Aviv from Las Vegas? East. So we got in a plane and we decided to fly west. So <laughs> we flew, our, our trip started and we got there at what time? 5.30 in the morning, approximately. I got there as late as I possibly could. And uh, then we arrived in Los Angeles and there was about a half a mile uh, hike from one end of the terminal to the other end of the terminal at Los Angeles. And then uh, they really, they like to get us nice and cozy to keep us warm on the airplane. So they sausage us into the airplane. We had a short layover about eight hours uh, at Los Angeles. That's not that long. And so, and now we're further away from our destination, which is what? Tel Aviv. So we flew from Las Vegas to Tel Aviv. Nope. We flew to Frankfurt. And uh, they were very gracious because they knew we were tired from the journey, so they decided to let us rest in Frankfurt for five hours, which was nice. And so after our five-hour layover, we finally, finally, finally arrived in Tel Aviv, uh, and we had a sign, Welcome to Israel, greeting us. And this is a picture from the Tel Aviv Hotel. I'm not sure how that wine glass got in there, but <laughs> I tell you, it was well-deserved. <laughs> And that's the Mediterranean Sea there at night, and there's the wonderful uh, uh, parkland right along the shoreline, and we uh, were able to get some rest that night. It was about a 30-hour uh, journey uh, from, uh, from room to, from house to hotel, and it was a long, long journey to get to the promised land. Uh, 30 hours is a long time. Has anybody had a, a commute like that before? Um, not as long, though as poor Moses, right? Moses' journey to the promised land began in Exodus chapter 3. Now keep in mind, Moses uh, uh, was sort of grew up in, in Egypt, and then he went out into the wilderness area, and uh, there the burning bush greeted him, and the Lord spoke to Moses. And we know that the Lord uh, commanded Moses to go back to Egypt and free uh, the Israelites from slavery. But in addition, the Lord said this, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt, and I have come to deliver them through you, Moses, and to bring them to a land flowing with milk and honey. And so this is the first time that Moses uh, has heard the word that there is a land flowing with milk and honey, a land with rich vegetation awaiting you, uh, and your people, and that is the ultimate destination. And so, of course, we know the story that Moses led the people, uh, dragging them practically out of Egypt, and they found themselves in the wilderness land, uh, not the promised land. So while we had a 30-hour uh, challenging commute, they were in the desert for how long? 40 hours. And that desert area is actually the kingdom of Jordan. It's a, it's a very important country, Jordan. I want to take a little moment and just share a little bit about the country of Jordan uh, because I want us to have uh, so, some compassion and love for these people in the country of Jordan. Our tour guide named Sammy, he was so funny. He would, uh, at the end of each of our days in Jordan, he would say, on behalf of you, I would like to thank our driver. And on behalf of you, I would like to thank myself. <laughs> Jordan, uh, probably amidst some resistance among other uh, players in the Middle East, forged a peace treaty in Israel that has more or less stayed intact since 1994. 
uh, since the wars in Iraq and Syria, they have received approximately 2 million refugees into a country that has a population of 6 million people. Do the math. Uh, not only that, they uh, weren't blessed with natural resources. So around them, there are kind of oil-rich countries. Uh, Jordan is just like a great big rock. It's just nothing but rock. All over you see is rock. Uh, I think their, what was their largest uh, uh, natural resource might be phosphorus. I mean, their, their biggest e eco economic thing might be this very small commodity. In fact, uh, it's a country of deep poverty, and yet um, they kind of manage the stress of the whole region in some ways. Uh, and tur tourism ends up being vital to their economy. I don't, if it, how many of you have heard of Queen Noor? She was uh, very uh, well-known. She wrote a memoir. And Queen Noor was uh, an American who married the king of Jordan. And uh, one of her projects was to get people with disabilities and people in poverty uh, working in a creative man manner. Um, at the top of Mount Nebo that I'll talk about in a little bit, there are all these wonderful mosaics there from the ancient Jordanians. And she taught people with disabilities the art of, uh, well, she didn't teach them. She uh, equipped them to learn the art of mosaic making. And so uh, on one of our stops, they took us to a place where they were making mosaics. And you could see them working on them. And I purchased this uh, to be on loan with, uh, to New Song Church for indefinitely. Uh, so this was made, and I spent a fair amount of money for it, but this will go to strengthen the economy of poverty uh, in Jordan, especially those who are in poverty. And we have a picture of Jesus knocking on the door. So why would people come to Jordan? Uh, what's the, the main tourism uh, visitation is a place called Petra. Anyone been to Petra? Jane's been to Petra. Oh, you've been to Petra? Wow, it's pretty spectacular. You've been to Petra? Wow, Mike, Mike in the back. That's amazing. Uh, I'd never even heard of it, really, and then we got to go visit Petra. There are these amazing, um, there are tombs, kind of, and there are these great big uh, artistic uh, uh, stone sculptures, and there's a, it's almost a great big national park, and you can walk for miles visiting different places. This uh, sculpture is called the Monastery, and it's at the top of a thousand-step hike that's about about a mile long to get to the very top of it and then you have this beautiful thing awaiting for you um jane got to ride on a camel right how was that jane was that fun w were you nervous <laughs> that's right uh and uh our friend connie uh got a boyfriend while she was in uh, at petra so <laughs> um that's, I can't tell that story. <laughs> and I climbed to the top of this. They have these little peaks. And uh, myself and Marsha climbed to the top of this peak where we could look down at, um, at, the, um, at the monastery. And on the way up to the journey, I found this sign, End of the World Coffee Shop. So at the very top of these peaks, they have these little tents. And you actually have coffee uh, made for you there in the tent uh, at the very, at the, just in the middle of nowhere. Um, in some ways, Moses had reached his own end of the world at Mount Nebo. So by the end of his journey, he, it turns out he died when he was 120 years old. And before he died, he had survived these 40 years in the wilderness. And he was kind of like the pastor for the, for the people. And I thank God every day that I don't ever have to listen to anybody grumbling at New Song Church. And we're a, a, we're a complaint-free church. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, Poor Moses. <laughs> uh, Jenny's biting her lip. <laughs> uh, Moses had to listen to the people grumble all the time, with good reason, to be honest, because it was rough in the desert, right? And this whole time, Moses has this, this memory of the Lord saying that I will take these people to the land of milk and honey. And as each year goes by, uh, sometimes with no food, with little food, as each year goes by, sometimes with almost no water. I can't help but wonder if Moses thought, is this ever going to happen? When is the promised land going to come? 
This is our Advent season, and it is a time of preparation for things to come, and we, we, we are preparing for the coming of Christ again. And this, this hope of preparation can come amidst um, doubts. It can come amidst uh, great pain and sorrow in our lives. It can come amidst the, the stresses and the challenges of, of what culture and society and mass media says uh, Christmas should be. Uh, and we can find ourselves also looking backwards. So at the very end of his life, uh, the Lord led Moses up to the top of Mount Nebo. And this is a very special mountain for a few different reasons. One in particular is when you get to the top of the mountain, you can look back to the desert land that you had gr lived in for 40 years. You can see where you came from. And you can't help but wonder what thoughts Moses had as he climbed that mountain, looking at... Um, what God had done with them, but also uh, with some regrets. And then when you get to the top, you can also see the future that awaits. On a clear day, when you get to the top of Mount Nebo, you can see the Jordan River, you can see the Dead Sea, you can see Jerusalem, you can even see Bethlehem from Mount Nebo, and you can see the rich, vibrant land waiting to be toiled by God's people. And so the Lord leads uh, Moses up to Mount Nebo, and the Lord showed him the whole land. What a joyful day that must have been for Moses, right? To be able to see finally the promised land is coming. For we Christians, finally we are waiting for the coming of Christ to come into our lives yet again. And then the Lord says this, this will blow your mind. I will give it to your de descendants. I have let you see it. I have let you have a little hint of the promised land, but guess what? You ain't going. What? I would have hired a lawyer on the spot, say, where's my rights? I've done everything for you, God, to get these people, and I've dealt with their grumbling. I've heard you get mad at me, you get mad at the people. I'm stuck in between, and you're not going to let me go to the promised land? And it turns out, do you know why? It turns out that Moses, while the people were starving and yearning for water, God said, uh, speak and there will come water from the rock. And you know what Moses did instead? He took his stick and he pounded it probably with some anger into the rock and the water poured forth. And this is a, a, a rock that might be uh, in a place where this happened and a stream of uh, flowing water that actually came out from there. And I have water in my office from this Moses rock uh, today. And for that, God refused to let him come to the promised land. Now, in our modern years, we can find this to be unfair and unjust. Um, as we begin our Advent journey, we can sometimes find ourselves uh, feeling regret or remorse. Some of us might be feeling sadness. I'm uh, especially mindful today of my sister because her son uh, would have turned 19 years old uh, two days ago. Um, and we know for many of us, uh, the holidays is this weird uh, tension between um, our memories of our childhood. How many of you have memories of your Christmases gone past? Uh, for those of you that are a little bit older than our, our confirmation students, we're some of us are, have more Christmases behind us than ahead of us, right? And so we begin to think about things. Maybe we have only our own regrets in our own lives, and we can find ourselves looking back at what's gone before us. But God calls us, calls Moses, to look at the coming of the promised land. For we Christians, this Advent season is a time of preparing for the coming of Christ. God disrupts kind of the, the flow of human history with radical love. That is what is awaiting for us this Christmas season, this Advent season. Um, And sometimes what awaits us is change and good news. How many of you love to have things change in your life and have uh, your life disrupted by something brand new? Yeah? Some of us are afraid of it. Uh, and yet we can find celebration in transitions and changes. Moses cared deeply about his people. And now as he was nearing 120 years old, 
I can imagine those bones were tired, right? And as he uh, would be laid down to rest, they would mourn for him 30 years. I was commenting with Pastor David and I over the last three years, we've buried a lot of people in this church over the last three years. The church changes all the time and there are different faces that show up, new faces and old faces and can be disorienting. But Moses had prepared new leadership to take on the mantle. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him and the Israelites obeyed him. Moses' job was now complete and now he was ready to prepare the way for Joshua to lead their people into the promised land. Next week, we will hear about John the Baptist, who is the preparer of the way of coming of Christ into this world. And so we begin this Advent journey. I want us to think about Advent uh, and give thanks for new beginnings as we begin this journey. Patricia Weekly is beginning a, our, our new uh, chapter in the Academy as our director. We've been very blessed with Jackie for so many years as our director, and now she has prepared the way and prepped Patty to begin a new chapter in the life of the New Song Academy. And we can thank for those who have prepared us in our own leadership before us. The most important disruption, of course, is that of Jesus Christ coming into the world, God dwelling among us. In Isaiah it says, A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And on that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the people's the nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. If we think about the words of Christmas, they're words like glory. They're words like joy. They're words like peace. Uh, do not be afraid. Glory to the God in the highest. Hark the herald angels sing. So my challenge to us at New Song is to practice joyfulness this Advent season as we wait the coming of Christ. Our pilgrims, uh, we crossed into the promised land after being in Jordan, after being in this desert scape for so many uh, days. And the first thing that we did in the promised land, you know what we did? We went to the lowest place on earth, the Dead Sea. And it is a place uh, filled with joyfulness and fun and happiness. Uh, not only is this the lowest place on earth, you know what they else they have there? the lowest uh, bar on earth, they have the lowest beach on earth, they have the lowest uh, staircase on earth, pretty much everything, and the lowest bathroom on earth, they got all that. Uh, and it's a place where you just get to have fun and you get to play in God's beautiful creation. And so the, here we are beginning to play, and some of us uh, uh, good stewards kept our clothes on and uh, stayed on the, on the sand. Other of us were a little bit more uh, uh, adventurous. And when you walk into the Dead Sea, something amazing happens. And we can think about the radical nature of God coming into the world as a baby, not as a big and mighty uh, Lord, but as a baby who will grow up to be a king and who himself will die to give us life. As you go into the Dead Sea, the, the salt and the minerals uh, prop you up so that you can float around in the Dead Sea. And here we are floating. And you get free uh, mud facials. And uh, we slathered ourselves with mud, and by the time you, uh, you end, ended your trip and washed off, you could feel uh, your skin soft for the whole day. Uh, this Advent season, let us look to the promised land of the promise of Jesus Christ coming into the world, and let us practice joy. Uh, one little addendum, Moses didn't make it to the promised land. But it turns out that when Jesus came into his ministry and he climbed a mountain of transfiguration, uh, Mount Tabor, uh, something amazing happened. And he climbed up with his disciples, and there appeared with him Moses. And Jesus brought Moses to finally set foot in the promised land. Amen.